This is a little video to take you through how to complete the measuring cells worksheet about using stage micrometers and eyepiece graticules. So if you want a spare copy of the sheet, just print one out off the task. Okay. So you've got some notes here explaining how stage micrometers and eyepiece graticules work. And you've got them in your lab book as well. So the stage micrometer shows true lengths. It's basically like a tiny, tiny ruler. Using figure 4.3, calculate the true length represented by one of the smallest divisions on the eyepiece graticule. Show your working. Right, let's find figure 4.3. So I know from figure 4.3, it tells me here, it's been viewed at times 100 magnification. I'm just going to write that big there to help me remember later on. And it tells me the total length of the micrometer, this, is one millimetre. Or a thousand micrometres. Here's the eyepiece graticule. Remember, an eyepiece graticule scale is not actual measurements. It's literally just lines. You need to know how much each of those lines is worth in terms of a distance at different magnifications. So this is what you need to do. You need to take a ruler and you need to line up these two scales. You can either pick just a little bit of the scale. So for instance, these two lines line up really nicely here. I might use a red pen to help you see this a bit better. Um, I could pick any point where the, the lines line up nicely, ni nicely rather, but I'm going to go just to the end here. They don't line up perfectly, so you're going to get a little bit of error on here. But can you see, I've lined up these two scales. Now I know now that one millimetre in real life is equal to, now if I add up how many lines I can see here, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 94 little lines. And my job is to work out how much one line is worth in millimetres. So one ninety-fourth of a millimetre is worth one line. So if I do one over ninety-four, I get 0 0.0106 millimetres equal to one line on the eyepiece graticule. If I can convert that into micrometres to make it look a bit tidy. So 10.6 micrometers is worth one line. So that was what my first question asked me. It said, um, how much does one division on the IP's graticule represent? It represents 10.6 micrometers. You might get a little bit of a different answer to that, depending on which, which of those lines you've chosen. I've gone for 94, you might go for 95. You might be more precise and say it's worth 94 and a half lines the closer you get the more accurate you'll be then it says now calculate the true length represented by the whole of the eyepiece graticule well the whole of that graticule there is not just 94 lines there's a hundred little lines in there so the full length is a hundred lines each line is worth 10.6 micrometers so 10.6 times 100 will give me the answer of 1,063.82 micrometers. So let's go back to this front cover here. We've got 10.6, we said, didn't we? I've just got a million copies of this worksheet. And we've said the full eyepiece now represents 1,063.82 micrometers. Again, you might get a tiny bit of a different answer to that depending on your measurements. You might be at a point now where you can do the rest of your sheet on your own and have another go at anything you've got wrong. But if you're still not feeling confident, just keep watching. So figure one, Sorry, figure 4.1 on worksheet 4 shows an onion epidermal cell viewed at 100. Let's find that one. Figure 4.1, here we go. This one. So this, again, 
is at times 100 magnification. That's the same as I had here. And it's asking me how many cells can fit lengthways into the eyepiece graticule. Now, it really depends on where you count. If I go for this side here, and I look at how many cells are along that line, I could say, well, there's one, two, three, four, five, five and a half, another half, so let's call it six. So that's one option. Or I could go with the left-hand side of this scale. I could say it was half, one, two, three, four, another half, maybe five. Or if I was to move that mentally over somewhere else, I might get a different number. It's because all the cells are very different lengths, aren't they? So we're looking for an answer of somewhere in the region of five or six here for this answer. Now it says calculate the mean length of one onion epidermal cell. Show your working. You've got a, a few ways of approaching this. I know on this diagram the length of one line. Um, one line represents 10.6 micrometers. So I could say, well, okay, let's do a mean of a few cells. Let's take this cell here. And that cell there, if I count it, is 5, 10, 15, 50? Wait, hang on. 5, 10, 15, 20 little lines big. So that cell there, if it's 20 lines, and each line is worth 10.6 micrometers, I can just do 20 times 10.6, and I could say that cell there is worth 212 micrometers. It wants me to do a mean of a few, doesn't it? So we could do the same with this one, this cell here. So that's 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18-ish lines. So this cell is 18 lines. I know that each line is worth 10.6. 10.6 times 18, uh, 190.8 micrometers. That's a slightly shorter one. I could do this little squidger here. Um, one, two, it's kind of hard to look over my phone. Is it about seven? So this is seven lines, and I know each line is 10.6. So I say this cell is. 74.2 micrometers. I could keep going and doing loads of those, but let's just say I've done three. I could take a mean of those three lengths there. So let's say I've got 212 plus 190.8 plus 74.2 divided by three. So my mean is 159 micrometers. That's one way of doing that. Or another thing I could do is say, well, uh, I know that full length there of the eyepiece graticule. Um, what was it? We said the full length was 100 lines, so the full length was 1063.82 micrometers. And I've just said that there are either five or six cells in that length. So I could take that length, I've already forgotten what it is. Uh, 1,063.82 micrometers. That's the full length. And I could say, well, let's divide that between five or six cells we said you could fit in there, couldn't you? In that gap. Let's say 5.5. Let's divide that by 5.5 cells. 1,000... And 63.82 divided by, not five. So that gives me 193.42 micrometers per cell. How does that compare to the one I've just got? A bit different. Not hugely problematic. I guess this one's going to be skewed downwards by this little piddly cell, isn't it? So there's lots of different ways of doing this. 
Um, there's no right answer. The more cells that you take into account in your mean, the better your mean will be. Here, I've taken five or six cells along that line into account, so I'm more inclined to trust that one there. So that's this question at the top here, isn't it? Calculate the mean length of one onion epidermal cell. So we've got two methods of doing that. Go back and watch the video again if you're not quite sure what I was doing there. Then question three. It says, figure 4.4 shows the stage micrometer at a magnification of times 400. So we've got bigger now. Let's find 4.4. So this, let's just put a little reminder, 400 times magnification this time. So even though my eyepiece graticule is the same length, now each line is worth a different distance on the stage micrometer. So I need to, we call this calibrating. We are recalibrating the eyepiece graticule on a different magnification. Um, let me read the question again. Calculate the true length represented by one of the smallest divisions on the eyepiece graticule. Show your work in. Okay. So this is the stage micrometer. This is the same picture as this here, but it's been magnified. So remember that was worth one millimetre. And it was actually split up into ten chunky sections. So each one of these chunky sections here is worth 0.1 millimetre. Because it's a tenth of that, isn't it? So that means this chunky little thing here is worth 0.1 millimetre. I'm going to do the same again, the same way as we calibrated this one. We're going to find matching lines. Can't get it perfect, especially because these lines on the left are much bigger, aren't they? Let's say roughly there and roughly there. And I'm going to count up how many gaps I've got here. So. 5, 10, oh sorry, 10, 20, 30, 35, 36, 37. So 0 0.1 millimetres is 37 gaps on the eyepiece graticule. I want to know what one gap is worth at 400 times magnification. So I'm going to take 0 0.1 and split it up into 37 gaps and see what I get. So I'll do that and I'll find one gap is worth 0 0.0027 millimetres. Or if I tidy that up a little bit, 2.7 micrometres. Okay. So remember the eyepiece graticule always stays the same. It looks the same when you look down the microscope. But as you zoom in with a magnification, you get more and more and more magnification on the stage micrometer you're seeing less of it so before you could see the whole one millimeter when you zoom in you can see less so each gap now we had one gap here worth 10.6 micrometers now my gap is worth much less 2.7 micrometers so we were on question three i think weren't we so we've done that one Um, and then use figure 4.2 and 4.4 to calculate the length of one onion epidermal cell. So 4.4 and 4.2. So this is times 400 magnification. I've just worked out that one gap equals 2.7 micrometers. This is one gap on the eyepiece graticule. This is my eyepiece graticule again. So... I'm hoping you get into the point now where you're going through your corrections by yourself, not just watching the video. You pause anything. Ah, I can actually do this now. Try and have a go at the rest of the sheet on your own. If you can't, carry on. That's fine. Right. What does one of these cells measure? Well, it's like, where do you start? Where do you stop? Should we go for the inside line or the outside line? It's a bit open to interpretation, isn't it? There will be a bit of a margin for error in an exam. Don't worry about this. So I know the whole of that gap there, the whole of the eyepiece graticle is 100 lines, and this pretty much takes up all 100 lines apart from one, two, three, four of them. So I'm going to say that this cell is worth 96 gaps. 
and I know one gap is 2.6 micrometers so 96 gaps it's got to be 96 lots of um, 2.7 hasn't it I've done this before and, and decided to do the outside to the outside of the cell so I've got 99 gaps but this is where you're going to get a little bit of variance 96 lots of 2.7 259.2 micrometers okay so I think the length of one cell is 200 and I've already forgotten 59.2 micrometers so we've measured um, we've measured the cells here at a lower power and we've measured them at a higher power and we've actually got a slightly different answer haven't we we thought here our cells were about 193 micrometers or 159 micrometers. Now we're finding actually they are a bit bigger. This is saying if you didn't get the answers, the same answer to question two and three, which do you consider to the most accurate estimate of the mean length? Um, we had a variety of different answers here. I completely understand what you were saying, and it's true about the fact that when you're on a higher power, you have got a little bit more control as to where you start and stop measuring haven't you you've got a lot more detail to look at here and make a decision as to where the edge of the cell is it's a little bit um they're all fuzzed together here aren't they in the lower magnification however the question says which do you consider to be the most accurate estimate of the mean length of an onion epidermal cell this one you haven't actually done a mean at all have you you've just chosen one cell and that cell could be freakishly anomalously uh, large we don't know so actually I would say that this answer to question two is a more accurate estimate of a mean because we've actually had we've not had a large sample size in the slightest I, for this one I did a mean of three cells this one I did a mean of five or six cells so I'd, ideally I'd want to do maybe 10 or 20 different cells and take a mean and I try and sample randomly as well because the problem is if you don't sample randomly you tend to maybe avoid little piddlers like this. You choose the nice ones. Um, it's just human nature to do that. Therefore, that will really skew your mean, make it either a little bit bigger than it should be or a little bit smaller than it should be, depending on what you choose. Right, let's have a look. Um, figures 5.5 and 5.6. There we go. Figures 5.5 and 5.6 on worksheet 4 show the same cells as in figure 1 and 2, but the eyepiece graticule has been turned around so we can do the width of the cells instead of the length. The eyepiece graticule last time was that way around, wasn't it? Um, using figures uh, 4.3, 4, 5 and 6 make two estimates of the width of the cells. Show your working in each case. So we need to do the width of 100 times and a width of 400 times. So we need some facts to start with. I need to recall that times 100 and times 400, how big those gaps were. So I think we said at times 100, one gap was worth, looking on my other sheet here, 10.6 micrometers. And I think we said at 400, one gap is worth 2.7 micrometers. Now are we asked for a mean here or we are aren't we? Calculate the mean width of one cell. So we should do a couple and take an average or we do the whole length and do an average that way. So there's two options. So either you pick yourself a couple of cells randomly. We'll do about how to do random sampling later in the course. Or you go across the whole lot. You know here there are 100 gaps and you know that maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and a little bit cells fit in 100 gaps. So you can do it that way. Um, let's say 13 cells fit in, it's not quite all of them is it, 98 gaps? So in 98 gaps that equals 13 cells wide. So how many gaps is one cell worth? Let's do 98 
divided by 13. So you could go, you could say each shell on average is worth 7.5 gaps. You know that one gap is 10.6. So if I times 7.5 by 10.6, I get 79.9 micrometers is my average width of one cell. If I was to do it the other method, let's say I randomly pick a couple and do a mean of that, I might say, right, this cell here is worth five, six, seven, eight gaps. This cell here that I've picked is worth five, six, seven, eight, nine gaps. This cell that I've picked here is worth uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a bit gaps. <laughs> Very accurate. Um, so the mean of those numbers is going to be just over eight, isn't it? Eight, oh, of course. Oh, my goodness, I can't believe I've got a calculator about to do that. Um, so I might say that the mean cell here is 8.3 gaps. I know that each gap is worth 10.6. So let's times this by 10.6. So I'm saying uh, the mean is 88.3 micrometers. I'm still on the top diagram here. Uh, that's not a million miles out, is it? Two similar methods. Which of those two do I trust? This one. I trust this one more because this one I've taken a mean of 13 cells effectively. This one I've just taken a mean of three. So the more uh, cells you have in your sample, the more representative. That's the word that we want here. Really important word at A level. The greater the number of samples in your... Sorry, the greater the number of individuals in your sample, the more representative that sample is likely to be. The more reliable your mean or representative your mean. Um, it's also asked me to use this one, hasn't it? It says calculate the mean width of one cell using the 400 times magnification. So if I pick this cell here, this is worth, again, it's hard to know where to start, isn't it? 10, 20, 30, no, 32 gaps, something like that. This one is, what do we think? Uh, 10, 20, 28 gaps. So I would say the mean here is 30 gaps. I know each gap is worth 2.7. So if I do 30 gaps times 2.7, I'm saying that each one of those is 81 um, micrometers big, which actually fits in with these numbers, doesn't it? And then finally on your sheet, some of you missed this out because you couldn't remember one of the lengths that you did. Compare your answers to all of these different questions. Questions two, three and five and your own estimates. So we had, um, these were all questions about the width of a cell, weren't they? Or the length of a cell or something like that. So it's basically saying, why are they all different? Why is it that every cell gives you, or every method gives you a different length? So the key really is this term natural variation. In biology, we always encounter a lot of natural variation in the length of cells. There are genetic differences that cause those. There are environmental reasons why you get variation, but you don't expect every individual to be the same at all in biology. It's not like chemistry or physics where particles are all very similar. We have a lot of natural variation. Okay, so your job now is just to check you are happy with IP squatticles and stage micrometers. Check you have some notes in your booklet that you are happy with. It's not come up yet for AQA. I've got a couple of OCR questions on the sheet below, which I'll give to the lower six to have a go at doing next week. Just two ones, but if you want to print them out and do them yourself, earlier than that, you can send them over. Maybe try and have a go at this worksheet again, all by yourself. Or maybe just leave it a couple of weeks until you've forgotten the answers, you've forgotten this video, and put a little reminder in your phone to have another go, maybe at, in October half term. And then see if you can re-watch the video just to check your answers. If you still don't have a clue, come and see me and we'll figure out another way of going through it.